Okay, so today we're looking at 12-5, which is angle relationships in circles. In the last video, we looked at 12-4, which was inscribed angles in a circle. So remember, your inscribed angle was had your um, vertex of your angle on the circle, and it was half of its arc. Okay, well, we're going to expand on that a little bit today. We're looking at our first theorem here is when I have a secant and a tangent line, it is still half of the arc because the vertex of the angle is still on the circle, okay? So when the vertex of your angle is on the circle, then the measure of the angle is half of the arc, okay? That doesn't change. So vertex on the circle, then the angle is half of the arc, okay? So let's take a look at that. If I have that the measure of arc BC here is 142 degrees, and I know that the measure of angle ACD is 90 degrees, okay? I want to find the measure of angle BCD. Um, well, angle BCD is here, so B, oops, CD, sorry for the awful highlighting. Okay, it's going to hit this arc here, all right? So that means that my angle BCD is going to be half of the measure of arc, whoops, I'm writing an A, I don't want an A, um, BC. All right, the vertex of my angle is on a circle, so it is half of the intercepted arc. So that means that the measure of angle BCD is going to be half of 142. So the measure of angle BCD is going to be 71 degrees. Okay, now I wanna look at the measure of arc a, B, C. So I'm going to erase that highlight so we can look at this one. And here's arc A, B, C. Okay, now the measure of angle A, C, D is going to be, I'm going to take that and multiply it by 2 to get the measure of the arc because the angle is half the arc. So the arc is 2 times the measure of the angle, which is A, C, D. So that means that the measure of arc ABC is going to be 2 times 90, which means that arc ABC is a semicircle. It'll be 180 degrees. Okay? Any questions on that? Go ahead and make note of it somewhere on your paper. All right, let's look at what happens when the vertex of our angle is not on the circle, okay? If the vertex of our angle is inside the circle, so if I'm looking at the measure of angle 1 here, okay, the vertex of angle 1 is inside the circle. Now, remember that this angle right here, angle 1, is going to be congruent to this angle right here because they are vertical angles. So what I'm going to do is I know that my two arcs, half of those have to end up equaling those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this arc that um, intercepts angle 1, okay, and I'm going to take the arc of its vertical angle. So I'm going to take the measure of arc AB and the measure of arc CD. I'm going to add them up, and then I will divide by 2. So it is half of the sum. All right, so when you have inside the circle, so it's in the interior, it is half the sum. All right, so on the circle is half the arc. Inside the circle is half the sum of the two arcs the one for the angle you're looking for, and its vertical angle. Now, if our vertex is outside the circle, okay, then the measure of the arc is going to be half the difference. So if it's on the circle, we divide by 2. If it's inside the circle, we add the two arcs and then divide by 2. If it's outside the circle, we're going to subtract the two arcs and then divide by 2. Okay, so when I look here, if I'm trying to find the measure of angle 1, this is angle 1 right here. It's kind of far away from the angle. 
But if I'm trying to find the measure of angle C here, I'm going to take the measure of arc AD. From that, I'm going to subtract the measure of arc BD, and then I will divide by 2. Make sure that you're always subtracting the arc that is on the outside, which is going to be your bigger arc. So it's the farthest away from your angle. So I'm going to take this outer arc minus the inside arc, okay? Because otherwise you're going to end up with negative numbers, and that's not going to work out so well. Okay, so I can either have a, um, a secant and a tangent. I can have two tangents, or I can have two secants. It doesn't matter. It's going to be the same thing every time. We're going to do half of the difference of the two arcs. Let's look at how some of those are going to work. All right, I want to find the measure of angle S, Q, R. So I'm going to look for this angle right here. All right, remember that this angle and this angle are vertical. So the arcs that those two angles hit are this arc and this arc. So I am going to get that X is going to be half of, since I am on the inside, I'm doing half of the sum, okay? So I'm going to do half of 132, which is going to be 66 degrees, okay? So when your vertex is inside your circle, it is half the sum of the two arcs. All right, let's take a look at what happens when our vertex is outside the circle. All right, it is half the difference. So when I'm looking for angle X right here, okay, I'm going to look at this arc and this arc. Okay, that's what is contained between the two sides of my angles. Arc QR over here, I don't care because it is outside the angle. All right, so I'm only looking at what is contained within the sides of the angle. So X is going to be half of, and I've got 174, and I've got 98. My vertex is outside the circle, so it is half the difference. And remember, take that bigger one minus the smaller one. All right, so 174 minus 98 is going to be 76, and half of 76 is going to be 38 degrees. All right, now when I look at this one, what you should notice here is that line or ray FG and ray uh, FE, okay, so FG and FE are both tangent to the circle. That means that within the two sides of my angle, the entire circle is contained inside. So I'm going to be looking at this arc and let me change colors so we can see, and this arc, okay? So, I need to find the measure of this arc before I can find the value of x. So, in order to find this arc, I know I have the whole circle contained between my two tangent lines, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to do 360 minus 132, which is going to give me that this arc is going to measure 228 degrees. So now to find the measure of that angle, I can do half of the outside arc, which is that 228, minus the inside arc, which is 132. So 228 minus 132 is going to give me 96. And when I divide that by 2, I'm going to get 48 degrees. All right. Let's look at another one. So what we're looking at here is I want to find the measure of this arc AF right here. Okay, well, what I'm going to start with here is I know this arc and this arc. If I can find this arc for AD, I know that I could subtract these three arcs from 108, or excuse me, from 360, and I could get what's left. So if I look here, I don't have really an angle that just intercepts this arc. So if I look at this whole arc, I see that it intercepts this angle right here. So that means that the measure of arc A, D, B, whoops, that should be an arc, pardon me, is going to be 2 times 110. 
So the measure of arc ADB is 220. So this whole thing here all the way around to here is 220 degrees. Well, if I want to find just what AD is, I'm going to take that 220 and subtract the 160. So the measure of arc AD is 60 degrees. All right, so now I know that this is 60. Now, to find the measure of arc AF, I'm going to take, I know my whole circle is 360, and from it, I'm going to subtract these three arcs. So minus 48, minus 160, minus 60. Okay, and that is going to give me that the measure of arc AF is 92 degrees. All right. So what I want you to do now is to go ahead and pause your video. All right. Do these three problems on your own. Okay. You'll notice in your notes that there are two more for you to do on your own. If you want to go ahead and do all five, go for it. Um, the next two are going to be on the next page. So why don't you go ahead and do that? Just pause your video, do all five, A through E. Then you can check here and you can check the next slide. Okay. So pause your video now, please. All right, so go ahead and take a second and check A, B, and C. Again, pause if you need more time to look. Um, but when we're looking at here, if I'm looking at STU, that is going um, to intercept arc ST here, um, which is 166 degrees. The vertex of the angle is on the circle, so it is half of the arc. So I'm going to take that 166, and I'm just going to divide it by 2. Okay, here I want to find the measure of arc SR, Okay, and I know that my angle is 71 degrees. So I'm going to take my angle, multiply it by 2 to get my arc again because my vertex is on the circle. Um, C was a little trickier because we were looking for this angle here and we were given the measure of these arcs. A um, couple of ways that you could have actually done this. One is by finding this one, which I labeled Y and realizing that these two will form a linear pair, so they're gonna to add to 180. So if I do, um, because my vertex is inside the circle, half of 91 plus 225, I'm gonna get that this is 158. Then I can, from there, um, subtract that 158 from 180 to get that this is 22. The other thing I could have done is if I realize 91 and 225 add to 316. That means that in the circle, there are 44 degrees left. Does that make sense? So like for these two arcs, they're going to add to be 44. I don't know what they are individually, but together they're 44 degrees in order to make that 360. And then that angle would be half of that sum, which is 44. So it would be down to 22. Um, so either way, you kind of want to look at it and make sure um, you understand at least one of those two ways. Um, if you have not done D and E, go ahead and pause. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and check it right now. All right, so D was a little bit different than what we did before. We have that the angle is half of the outside arc minus the inside arc. So my angle is 25, is half of the outside arc, which is 83, minus my inside arc, which is X this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 so I can get rid of my 1 half instead of trying to distribute and have 83 over 2 minus 1 half x. Not super fun. So it's easier just to multiply both sides by 2 from the get-go. So then I'm going to get 50 is 83 minus x. Subtract 83 from both sides, then divide by the negative 1. All right. This one is a little strange, to be honest. Um, they're telling us that L to R, from here to here, is 100 degrees. Well, I think this is supposed to be pointing to this. So if that's 26 degrees, we just do 100 minus 26. If for any reason it's pointing, and that's what the book shows is the correct answer. So it's a little strange. Um, but if for any reason that 26 is actually pointing here, we would do the same thing we did over here and find this measure of this arc 
and then you would subtract that from 100. So just, I think that's what they meant to do, but it's not really how it worked out. Um, so it ended up being a silly problem. So, but make sure you understand this because if it's the way I think it's supposed to be, that's how this should have worked out. Um, and again, let me know if you have any questions and we will talk in class. Have a wonderful day, guys.